Hi and welcome to my channel. Now in today's video I thought I'd show you how to do the adjustment another video. I've already really done one of these actually but an adjustment on an amplifier here. This is a Sansui AU217 amplifier that I've got sitting here. I've had nothing else to do. I'm waiting for a few parts to come in. So I thought in the meantime I'll bring this amplifier up because I've got a few different things to show you in this amplifier. Uh, I'll talk about them a little bit longer as we go along but um, we're going to do the bias current adjustment on this amplifier and show you how I do mine to give you some idea of maybe how you do your. Now if you are watching my channel with a regular subscriber you'll see I've had a few obscure videos. I've been going through a few SD cards and I've got quite a few more to go through. Oddity snaps and that and I don't want to lose some of them and I can put them on another channel but there's a couple I thought maybe someone would be interested, some other people and uh, if you know there's a few views on it it's going to help the channel like you know what I mean it's going to help uh, me buy some other stuff to bring to the channel so I thought I'd rather stick it on here so um, do forgive me for that kind of thing but we are really concentrating on hi-fi kind of going on a little bit of video and gaming but it's still really hi-fi really I'm trying to keep me trying to keep it concentrated on that like I did before so today is about doing this Sansui AU217 like I say could be any other amplifier really but I'm going to show you how I do mine maybe give you an idea how to do your and the first thing I will say is You've got to be careful if you're doing this. If you've never done this before, a bit nervous, or anything like that, then probably best not to do it. Uh, but I'm going to show you how I do mine anyway. It's because the amplifier is going to be live. You're going to have a transformer in there with live voltage, 240 volts going across one side of it. You're going to have some fuses and that with 240 volts on it, and your hands dibbling in and out of there. Uh, it's not a good idea. So uh, just be careful. If you if you feel confident, you're going to be okay doing it. Uh, then give it a go and maybe have someone nearby to you as well while you're doing it. There's another idea if you've never done it before, have your mate, friend or something like that nearby just in case something happens rather than you doing it all by yourself in a room and there's no one else about. So be a bit careful, you've got to be careful. You do make mistakes. I've been electrocuted a few times, well a few belts shall we say, quite a few times uh, and also mucks up a few things by dropping screwdrivers into units, uh, a video recorder. So I'll come to that in a minute. But um, Anyway, you've downloaded your manual, or you found a manual, a service manual, how to do your unit, giving you some instructions. This is my one here, and we're going to talk through the instructions as we go along to make sure we get this right. I'm going to show you whereabouts I'm putting my multimeter, and what knobs I'm turning, etc., and have a little talk about it as we go along. So first of all, make sure you read these instructions carefully before you start. Make sure you know the instructions. So in this particular instructions here, it says confirm the AC supply voltage, so you make, it's going to be plugged in. Uh, it says the master volume must be on minimum, the unit must be at room temperature, so make sure the unit's not in a really, really cold room. Uh, for this adjustment, the unit must be on for more than three minutes, uh, so the volume's down to zero. We've got no speakers connected, no speakers at all connected, so do this without a load on. So, um, yeah, it's best to take the amplifier away from where it is anyway and put it on a bench or a table or something like that, so your speakers would be unplugged. No inputs plugged in the back of it. I usually have mine auxiliary and um, before the adjustment, like I say with the volume down, uh, before the adjustments uh, you want to turn VR1 and VR2 fully counterclockwise. So not clockwise, counterclockwise we're going to turn the two pots which I'm going to show you in a minute. So the uh, best thing I think really is to get your amplifier, unplug it from where it is, get it on a bench or a table or something like that, take the lid off. And you want to have to locate the parts, you know, the bits where you're going to actually do the testing, the pots you're going to turn. So it's all turned off first of all. Uh, that way you can twiddle about, look inside, maybe have a little bit of a poke around. Uh, be careful because uh, there's a few capacitors in there may still hold a charge, so just be a bit careful with that. that. But to give you an idea where things are, familiarise yourself where things are inside, that kind of thing. So right, we've got the lid off. Here was eight screws, quite a few screws on this uh, particular amplifier. So we've got the lid off. That's what it looks like inside. Uh, you may notice the bottom's missing. I'm doing something else to this amplifier, like so I'm going to uh, change a couple of capacitors in it's only a couple, and uh, I'm going to bring a video out about that. I, uh, I wasn't going to bring that video out, I was just changing a couple of capacitors uh, f just to maybe just tweak it a tad, but it could make quite a bit of difference. So I'm going to put a video up. I weren't going to, like I say, point is bringing out a video telling you nothing's happened. It seems a bit to bring out a million of them. Uh, so I'm going to do another video on that, and also we're going to do another video on this amplifier where. Um, I wouldn't say I found some uh, dry joints, but uh, it did, I think, affect the uh, operation of this when I very first bought it. So I thought I'd mention them as well. So we're going to get a couple more videos out of this particular amplifier while I'm waiting for some parts for another one to do something with that. So that's inside. <clears throat> so we want to locate these points on the board uh, where they are. Now, um, it may not be so obvious, but um, let's just show you a picture. We'll show you this picture here. The actual two points are here. There's two there and there's two there. Now I know this 
pretty much by doing quite a few amplifiers you do sometimes have some prongs sticking out at test points uh, I just verified it to make sure they were across the resistor if we go back to this first picture as you can see the two points there actually cross this resistor here if we just call it resistor 49 on one channel and on the other channel it's resistor 50 they do line up with the resistor there so I know where there are two test points here you may have to do a little bit of finding out yourself it may be on the uh, actual service manual if you flip through that service manual it may actually show you a picture where the two test points are uh, you may not have any test points you may actually physically have to have your multimeter across that resistor that it's telling you we may say resistor 5 we may say resistor 30 it'll tell you in your particular instructions so if we go here now I'm just going to show you I've showed you where they are the left hand channel is this test point here and the adjustment VR1 is here on my particular unit you're going to have to like I say look at your service manual try and find out where VR whatever it's asking you to change is on the board familiarize yourself so there it is it's usually a little plastic thing like this variable resistor they could be laying down like this or you could be standing up uh, so that you know that's what to look out for probably only have a couple on your particular amplifier you may have two per channel uh, but most of them have just got the one so that's what to look for there and here's the right hand channel here uh, I've done in green and there's the part uh, I've done in green again for the right hand side so if we come across one more I've just zoomed in a little bit here because uh, these connections here this is the left channel again I've got two connections to it uh, one's negative and one's positive for you to put your meter on uh, it doesn't really matter because all you're going to get is rather get a positive reading you're going to get a negative reading so you'll be adjusting it for minus seven millivolts if you put the wires the wrong way around rather than a positive seven millivolts and there's the adjustment then a little bit more of a close-up uh, there's the variable resistor VR1 for this particular channel VR2 for the right hand channel there so hopefully you can familiarize yourself where they are nice to know where they are before you start otherwise you've got it turned on and you think oh where was it that kind of thing so just find out where everything is and don't forget to before we start we want to actually turn them as far as they go both of them counterclockwise or anti-clockwise whichever way you want to call it so if they're kind of sitting there like that you want to turn them around so they're like that so they're, they're completely going that way so they're counterclockwise rather than clockwise so, so in other words they're off kind of thing really so that's that there so we're just going to flick over to the next one we'll show you how i connect my meter up uh you can do obviously uh, you know if you feel brave enough to do this exactly whichever way you want but we'll just make sure it says if we want it on millivolts we're going to be testing for millivolts here so make sure you've got your meter on millivolts you don't want it on resistance or something like that because you could actually short them test points out and cause some damage uh, so yeah just make sure you've got it on millivolts so double double check it's on millivolts there's my two prongs at the other end so I'm just going to turn it off for a minute what I'm going to say about these two prongs here I don't really want to use them a bit of a balancing act really I've got my amplifier on all that kind of stuff and I'm pushing these in there trying to hold them one on each test point it's going to be pretty hard then i've got in the other end i've got a screwdriver and all that so what i usually do is get a few crocodile clips and i put the red one to the positive uh, i usually got a black one but i can't find it so in this particular case i've had to use a white one just to diff, you know, be a bit of a difference so the white is actually on the black the negative so just bear that in mind now these would go on these if i just zoom in here you'll see it here i've connected these on to the left hand channel and I'll be turning this pot here to do the adjustment which I've already done there you can see in the picture but don't forget that would be normal counterclockwise to start off with so I'll put these points on this is with the amplifier off it's not plugged in yet on the bench ready to plug in but it's not plugged in yet I put these on I make sure these are not shorting out anywhere so uh, if we just take a close look at both of these they've got a bit of plastic around them so you just want to make them pretty close to each other here, these two test points. So first of all, I want to put it in there. We want to make sure it's not shorting out or touching. They're dead sitting dead straight, nice and firm. They're not touching this heat sink at all. And they're not touching each other. Like they're not too close. And you've got this right up here and one's bending over at an angle kind of thing, all that stuff. You want them dead straight. Make sure they're not shorting out against each other. Otherwise, again, it causes damage. Uh, so that's how I do it there. Now, if, if, if you couldn't, Add them two test points like I say your may actually be across you may have to find the resistor uh, to put it across uh, so you would have one each end of the resistor again make sure it's not shorting out against any other components nearby uh, you're, you're confident that they're not shorting out and then you can turn your amplifier on so once we've got it on I usually leave mine on for five minutes it says free but we'll let it warm up a little bit more five's not going to hurt and you will see this meter move yeah, come on zero may say 
two millivolts, something like that. You will see that creeping up, even though you've not made any adjustment. It's just when it warms up, it just just creep up a little bit. I think mine crept up uh, from when it started. I can't remember it when it came on, but it crept up about two or three, I think, two, two or three, two and a half, something like that, millivolts. It did take a lot of adjustment and turn it round. Uh, after about five minutes to get it on seven, I left it there and it kind of flickered between seven and 7.1 for the next five minutes or so after that. So it'd been on a good 10 minutes. So I was pretty confident that it's going to stay pretty much where it is. So that was that channel done. So all I've done is flicked over. I've uh, done exactly the same with the other channel. I don't forget, in between doing this, between going from this channel, let's go back here, just a bit too fast there. Once you've done that, turn your amplifier off. Make sure it's unplugged or whatever, because even just turn it off at the front, the mains is still coming at the back. So turn it, you know, unplug it, turn it completely off. Take these out of here and put it over to this side, which I've done here. Now don't forget, your amplifier's already been on about three or four or five minutes, ten minutes, whatever. So it's warmed up a bit, but I'll still leave it on for about another three or four minutes uh, with these connected. Uh, not touch that pot at all until three or four minutes later, it's warmed up again. And you know, I just twiddle that pot round. Clock, start moving it clockwise. You will go past, you will suddenly shoot past seven, just come back, just very, very slightly turn as you go uh, until you reach seven, and it should stay there for the next five minutes or so afterwards. So they're both done. Now, what I will say is, I haven't got a screwdriver handy, but uh, I didn't use a plastic screwdriver. It's recommended you use a one of these plastic screwdrivers, these special screwdrivers that are made out of plastic. Uh, because, like I say, you kind of may be a bit nervous, and it happens when you're not nervous, you kind of just lose your grip for a second or two, and it can drop in there and short some of these parts out. Like I said, I've done it with a video crawler many years ago, uh, and it's one of these that had an IC, and I was a bit unlucky, it fell in there, a big spark, and God knows what damage, and uh, it was quite a few IC. It just, I did test a few components nearby, and they seemed to be working. I think I, I must have just put too much voltage in one of the pins on one of the ICs, it, it just wasn't worth the hassle. Uh, not that I really knew how to mend it anyway, to be honest with you, at the time. Uh, so yeah, so um, be a bit careful. You don't drop that screwdriver in there. Of course, if you start dropping it, if you did drop it in there, don't put your hand in there and grab it out. Uh, just turn everything off first, unplug. Uh, maybe shake it upside down, because don't forget, the temptation would be to dive in and get your screwdriver out. The unit's still live. So there you go. So once it's all set up, obviously you put it all back together. Uh, and that's Jack's job done. And don't forget, you may not be lucky enough to have a couple of test points. You may have to do your own against the resistors. Actually, I should have took a picture of resistors. The resistors on this particular amplifier are just behind this heat sink up here somewhere uh, on, for each channel up here. Um, so, yeah, uh, but on your one, you may have to go across the resistors. You may have some test points. So, yeah, just look at your service manual to find that out. So, okay, uh, the next video, I will um, probably put uh, one of these holiday snap things up of mine. Uh, but um, the next video... I'm going to show you me just changing two capacitors on this particular unit and what difference that made. Uh, and also, like I say, come back and also uh, tell you when I first got this, it had a little fault that uh, I had to go around uh, looking at a few dry joints. Uh, not that I really found any, it's just more of soldering and off everything, but we'll talk about that in another separate video. So that's it. Um, yeah, again, be careful. Don't forget this is going to be on when you're doing it. So caution, 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 and maybe have someone in the room just in case if you're not that confident. Okay, that's it. Until the next video, I'll say thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all soon.